Hawaii's four county mayors have issued orders and directives designed to keep their constituents safe from the coronavirus. There are similarities and differences between how each county is handling the disease. There are daily briefings via social media. Derek Kawakami, Kirk Caldwell, Mike Victorino, and Harry Kim are here to answer questions about the battle against COVID-19. Tonight's live broadcast and live stream of insights on PBS Hawaii start now. Aloha and welcome to Insights on PBS Hawaii. I'm Lari Yamada. Oh, practicing social distancing, staying at home, working from home, wearing a mask in public, nighttime curfews. All of these mandates and orders have defined our new normal over the past several weeks as Hawaii fights the deadly coronavirus. So are these measures working? Positive COVID-19 cases are way below projections. So what's next? That's just one of the questions we will ask our panel, which for the first time since this crisis started, includes all four county mayors. We look forward to your participation in tonight's show. You can email, call, or tweet your questions, and you will find a live stream of this program at pbshawaii.org and the PBS Hawaii Facebook page. All right, here's a look at the latest stage in the evolution of insights because of COVID-19. Normally, I'd be sharing this studio with four guests tonight, I'm the only one here as all of our guests are joining me via the internet. So with us are Mayor Harry Kim, Mayor of Hawaii Hi. County, Mike Victorino, Mayor of Maui County, Derek good Kawakami, evening. good evening, Mayor of Kauai County, and Kirk Caldwell, Mayor of the City and County of Honolulu. Thank you, Mayors. Uh, no, no doubt all of you and your staffs have had long, long days and evenings, so we appreciate your time. All right, so let's just start with uh, the kind of the broader stay at home proclamation by the governor. Each of the counties ha have dealt with it uh, slightly differently. Maybe we'll start with uh, you, uh, Mayor Kim, uh, because you have, uh, I believe you have not issued a uh, stay at home proclamation. Talk a little bit about um, how you're addressing that and how you approached it and why. Uh, we do have one, but it piggybacks the states. I thought that'd be best. Uh that we piggyback the state so there will be less confusion in regards to what the policies are. The only difference between the Hawaii counties and the states is that I think we're a little stricter in regards to uh, shopping. In other words, if you don't wear a face mask, you don't go in the store. Uh, certain specific regulations on all people who meet the public or especially in the retail outlets. So we do have that in effect. So uh, let's go to Mayor Kawakami. Um, uh, I believe that you started uh, some of the um, curfews. And tell, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's start with the um, um, stay-at-home proclamation. Where is your county right now with that? Uh, we are uh, probably the, the strictest of all the counties. And, um, you know, I have to say that the decision-making process for Koi County is a sound process. We have a great team that's well versed in disasters and uh you know we're cognizant that um and we always worried about having a disaster hit oahu more so than hitting Kauai. uh so when we saw this spread throughout the world um we understood that Kauai is especially vulnerable and um we also saw how some of the healthcare workers were being impacted across the globe and we decided as a team that uh, there's no way that we're going to allow that to happen to our doctors, nurses, uh, ER docs, firefighters, police officers, paramedics, and everybody that was working on the front line. So we had to use our instincts um, to, to kick things off. So where is the um, uh, restriction now for, uh, for Kauai County? Did you extend it another month? Uh, I will, I'll get to Mayor Caldwell about that in a minute. Uh, no, we, um, you know, for the most part, we, we try to walk lockstep with, uh, with the governor's order. Um, at times, we've had to peel off and do what we felt was the right thing to do. Um, but in this case, we're um, just waiting to see uh, the governor's direction as far as extending. But um, 
I would say that uh, we, we should assume that we're going to extend it. Mayor Victorino? Well, we've been, uh, and Kirk and I went out early as far as, you know, setting up Kirk, uh, what do I call, our stay-at-home, work-from-home orders. And so with that being said, um, we followed pretty closely. Turn off your phones. Somebody's phones. I have somebody else that's echoing right now. There you go. Anyhow, so what has happened is that uh, we took a, a very strong approach because we had clusters break out very early in the in the game. And because of these clusters, it made us very aware that testing was something that had to be done. And that was where we were having a real difficult, difficult time in the first few weeks. Uh, since uh, early April, we've been able to ramp up the testing, and we've then done more than 3,500 tests in the last two weeks. And that has given us really an accurate assessment of what's going on. And I believe, just like the other counties, we're seeing our numbers leveling off. We're not at zero, but we're leveling off. And I feel good that at least now we have a pretty good take from all segments of our community, whether they're districts as well as homeless and other facets of our community. We're, we're feeling that um, we're close to uh, uh, at least getting a great handle on everything and getting our people back out and starting to uh, open up. And I'm following the lead of Honolulu and the governor, as well as the other counties, how they meticulously move in. And, uh, you know, we follow the same trend. That way there's no confusion by the public at large. So for the time being, you're, you're still um, sitting at, um, uh, I think the governor's stay-at-home proclamation to the end of um, April for the time being. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but if I'm looking the same as Derek and the rest, we'll see what happens. Uh, if the governor extends it, we will concur with him. If he doesn't, then we may take a different approach. Like Derek mentioned earlier, many of us decide that our islands have special, unique situations. I'm the only county that has three populated islands. Right. One, Lanai, has no cases. The other two have had, uh, uh, Molokai had two and the rest of the 110 has been here in Maui Island itself. So, uh, Mayor Caldwell, uh, of, of course, going to you, you, you went ahead and, and moved ahead and extended um, the stay-at-home um, uh, proclamation for another, for another month, at least to the end of May. Why did you want to go ahead and make that move now? Well, there's, a, there's two parts. In answer to the question is also we jumped in very quickly and issued a stay-at-home, work-at-home order um, watching what was happening around the rest of the country and looking at best practices. London Breed, the, the mayor of San Francisco, led the nation in, in mayors and governors in terms of make, issuing a stay-at-home work-at-home order. We're following what she did and then other mayors and took the, the action to basically shut down things. And I think as a result, you've seen a real flattening of the curve along with the cooperation, you know, all the other mayors doing the same and along with the governor. And so now we can start talking about um, reducing the number of restrictions in our stay-at-home, work-at-home order. And because we have a million people on this island and because it takes a while to start ramping back up, there has to be some lead time telling folks what's going to happen next so they can start to reopen business. It's not like you announce it one day and the next day they actually start to open. And so we wanted to start slowly, and we, you're, you're following the Johns Hopkins model, which for reopening that has things based on a dashboard of, we call it kind of an environment assessment. It's like a weather report. You know, what are the cases looking like? What are the hospital capacity like? What is our public health system like? And then what is the readiness level of our population to comply with, you know, face masks um, and social distancing? And then you look at risk. So what are the lowest risks and open those first? And so reopening our parks for exercise was a very low risk, and we have all the factors in place to start opening up. In terms of our weather report, we see sun, not clouds or storm, and so we're going to start that. But we've also announced again today that we're looking at golf courses, um, auto, de auto dealerships, so real estate brokers, um, things that you could do in a limited way that have very low risk, depending on what we see. Now, again, today I, we had one case. Um, if we continue to see a small number of cases and we see all the other things on our dashboard remaining low, we'll start to open up. And, of course, you know, we meet 
three times a week with the governor and other mayors. We talk about the things we're doing, and I've projected things we're, do we're talking about. And as much as possible, we'll try to cooperate, and we do. So we all have similarities. We have differences, too, because of the different nature of, natures of each of our islands. So I want to let um, yes, some we have extended, uh, jump we did in extend here to give order. a chance to, to oh. address some of this as well. And, and uh, yeah. whether it be, you know, taking a look at how you want to sort of roll out uh, reopening things, um, whether it, and also what type of precautions you want to have in place. One thing that I was going to touch on early was, um, uh, you know, what the protocols are or what the f recommendations are for wearing masks. I think I think a lot of people are still a little bit confused because it keeps uh, being tweaked and changed a little bit, and some businesses are handling it differently based on what type of business they are. So maybe if we could start with um, uh, maybe, maybe Mayor Kawakami, if you want to um, talk about uh, where we're at right now as far as um, Kauai County and how you're um, – um, addressing the public as well as businesses as to um, what they should be thinking about when wearing masks. Yeah, you know, um, we're, we're blessed to be guided by a very uh, competent um, district health officer and uh, her crew, uh, Dr. Janet Berman and Lauren Guest. And, you know, we, we use science, best practices, information that we do and don't have. And the whole purpose of using a cloth mask which has to cover your nose and your mouth for it to be effective, and everyone has to wear one for it to be effective, is um, to keep your germs to yourself. Uh, these cloth masks are not there to prevent you um, from getting COVID-19 because it's so microscopic. Um, it'll go through that fabric mask. So when we say that my mask protects you and your mask protects me. That is about as simple as I can put it. Uh, it's another barrier. We've stopped sneezing and coughing into our hands. We used to use the crook of our elbow, and uh, we are just putting up these additional safety measures because um, when we start to loosen up, which we're looking at the May 3rd date to start doing, we use two incubation periods from our last uh, case of community transmission, which Koi only had one. Uh, we use two incubation periods, so 28 days, so that takes us to May 3rd. So when we do loosen up, we need to have everybody disciplined and uh, self-governed so, so to make sure they understand so that we're in a mass business. What, what is the situation on Kauai County as far as um, uh, people um, being required to wear masks? What oh, yeah, they're required to wear a mask, and they're wearing it. Okay. You're going into any establishment, going into, is that correct, or in any public? Yeah, so... Places? It, pretty much any shared space, uh, with the exception that if you're exercising, as long as social distancing is maintained, if you live in a condominium, as soon as you uh, get out your door, because, you know, essentially there's all these shared spaces, you have to have a mask. Uh, you, when you're out in public in the grocery store, you're, you're required. So we, we dropped the mandate down because uh, we had to have those assurances uh, in place in order to loosen up. Mayor uh, Kim and uh, Mayor Victorino, is that the same uh, situation on Maui County and Hawaii County as far as um, what you're requir requ requiring of people for wearing masks out in public? Uh, basically, Go ahead, Coach. <laughs> in regards to, uh, I was thinking as uh, Derek was answering th that question, a uh, local newspaper put uh, on the front page, no mask, no service. In short, you couldn't go into a store or certain uh, premises uh, without a mask. And I think all of this is evolving. I mean, for all of us, we're learning so much about this COVID-19 that's going on. And uh, some of it is a little frightening, I want to point out here, because, because we are emphasizing masks. I think initially we had certain beliefs of it, and now we're finding out that people without is asymptomatic can be just as much carrier and transmitter of this disease as anybody else. So I think all of us are waking up to the uh, harshness of this virus, and I think you'll find stricter and stricter rules that all of us will have to go by in regards to mass behavior and other things. Mayor Victorino? What is uh, getting well, to speed on the situation of as far as wearing masks on Maui County? Maui, County. Maui pretty much follows the rest of the, the counties and the state. And uh, what we've done also is to make sure that um, 
plexiglass and other barriers have been put up in many of our stores and businesses. They're, many of them have done it on their own account, but the more barriers you put up, the less chance of catching it or the less chance of spreading it. And again, that's the key. And if you're sick, stay at home. We don't remind people enough of that. And so it's something we push a lot is if you're sick, stay at home and don't go out and get to your health care health provider and make sure you get tested. Uh, if I may, this is here. I'd like to elaborate a little bit on what Mayor Victorino said because it is so important. We both had clusters happen to us, and one of it, you know, the island of Hawaii, a person uh, and was just uh, within five days the spread of it because of that one area, a cluster as we call it. And like I said, we are learning so much about how dangerous this disease is and I think all of us are getting a little better on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I have um, a lot of varying questions here from um, viewers, no surprise. So I'm just going to kind of um, loosely uh, tie them to some of the responses that you've, uh, you've given. This one is for uh, Kauai Mayor uh, Kawakami about vacation rentals. And this uh, viewer is asking, saying, because of our vacation rental uh, will most likely be empty for many months, uh, giving our association site managers uh, it's a great opportunity for us to get in there and do repairs uh, so we can um, be productive. His question, though, is when will non-essential repairs to condominiums or maybe that type of work um, be allowed? And uh, and how would he how would that be discussed as far as social distancing to be able to do that? Has that been part of a discussion for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we had to, uh, so we loosened up a little by allowing some residential construction. The homeowner has to be on premise and we also allowed uh, landscaping, but we also layered on uh, some pretty restrictive measures for uh, safety. So come May 3rd, we're looking at uh, loosening up a lot of those restrictions to open up a lot more construction. Like I said, that timeline, the two incubation periods are key. Yeah. And so we're, we're looking at um, opening up uh, up into what the governor uh, has deemed as essential. We can't open up more than he uh, allows, but we're looking at getting at or close to um, what his intent was. Of course, we are going to be putting in uh, certain requirements. Uh, of course, uh, masks have already been taken care of, but putting in uh, mandates such as you cannot share tools, um, and so on and so forth are all part of the decision-making process. So we won't just open it up. There's going to be social distancing guidelines. We will have enforcement officers uh, patrolling to make sure that those uh, requirements are being met. And um, so May 3rd. All right. So this is a, a question for that's related. Um, I'll, I'll first go to Mayor Caldwell, and then also followed by um, Mayor Victorino. This has to do with um, opening up uh, parks and beaches. So this is from Robert Newton, who's saying, if we are opening up our par parks, why can't we open up our beaches? And this is a related question, Mayor Caldwell. Are you going to close Magic Island along with Ala Moana Beach? Um, and that's from Mike and uh, Makiki. Maybe if you want to try and wrap those into a, your response. So first of all, all 300 parks on the island of Oahu will open up at 5 o'clock in the morning this coming Saturday and uh, for exercise. So Magic Island, Ala Moana will be open along with Kapi'olani and every other park around the island for exercise. Um, and as far as the beaches go, it, there has been some confusion there. Um, the, the state of Hawaii has control of the beaches below the high water mark or vegetation line around the island. And the governor issued an order that prohibited exercising on the beaches. Our order did not extend down through the down to the beaches to the water. Um, I know I've, I've expressed um, privately that that maybe the order be relaxed. We're opening our our beach parks for exercise. It would be nice to have the beaches open too, because otherwise you have confusion among the users of our parks and beaches, and we need people to get out to exercise. And I, I know he's considering that. So, you know, all parks are open starting Saturday for exercise, and I'm hopeful that we can 
create some coordination between parks and beaches in terms of also being open for exercise. And, and I'm sorry, Mayor Victorino, Victorino, I will get to you in just a moment, but another related question just came in for, for you, Mayor Caldwell. While opening parks this weekend, um, they feel is a good thing on Oahu, how does that work with the state's quarantine rule for visitors to Honolulu? How, how are first responders going to be able to tell the two apart? Um, if you want to respond to that. Well, that is an issue. <laughs> That's an issue whether it's a park or not. You know, unfortunately, our first responders have the task, the difficult task of finding those visitors who are not quarantining, and they can look just like everyone else um, for the most part. And so it's the same way you would otherwise have to do it. If we get a call from a hotel that their guests are not in their room, and we know who they are, and we have the copy of their ID, and we're told where they are, they will be sought out and warned and, and asked to go back to the room. And if they're not, they would be arrested. And we've done that on Oahu. All right, to Mayor Victorino, um, this is from uh, Michael uh, in um, Kihei. He says, are you going to require testing before you open the beaches? I guess the, the broader question is, um, you know, what you're considering bef be before you do, and is this something that's being considered, or what else is being considered before you um, take such measures? Well, we've ramped up the testing, as you're well aware of, and so we feel good about what we've been doing. We have phased in opening of beaches. We opened three beach parks, uh, two beach parks and one uh, regular park last week. We're looking to open up another three or four this week. Uh, each week we phase them in and we see the residual effect. If there's any outbreak, we'll know where it came from because these are being phased in. So instead of like what Honolulu, the city and county of Honolulu is doing, opening all of our parks, we are doing a phased approach and we hope that over the next three or four weeks, we will have most of these parks open so that people can, again, exercise like you, Kirk. I will, I will say no playground, no basketball, no tennis, you know, no pickleball. All of that will be as part of our rules. The parks I have opened up are beach parks, and they don't have that type of facilities. But in, in any of them, we do open this, which are what I call playing parks or parks that we use for ball, ball games and all that. Those rules will be enforced very, uh, vigorously. Okay, and now to Mayor Kim and then to Mayor Kawakami. Um, get, get us up to speed as well on the situation with uh, beaches and parks there in your county and then what you're considering next in a general time frame. Uh, we try to follow the state uh, policies on parks, realizing that uh, very few people know the difference between a state park and a, a county park. Uh, we have been trying to push from day one. It's so important to be emotionally and physically healthy. Uh, we have an advantage over a lot of places. I'm not trying to be funny, guys, but I really consider Hawaii Island lucky because almost all of the island is a park. Uh, you can almost play tennis in some of our main streets of Pahala or uh, Naoleo. <laughs> uh, for those of you who know the island, you know I'm kidding, but not really kidding. Uh, well, the problem comes in regards to confusion on what they can do with beach parks, uh, what parks that border the ocean. And I think our policy is basically the same as the state. You can use the uh, parks that's adjacent to the ocean to go through to enjoy or surf and uh, swimming and snorkeling and fishing, but not for anything else as far as uh, lazing and uh, picnicking in those things. And that we are doing, and we are trying to make sure constantly that people be aware that uh, exercise is a main issue of staying well and getting well. And so we try to make sure we can open up and identify as much as possible where they can do that. And to you, Mayor Kawakami. Um, we, we've closed our parks. Uh, you know, we were and we are w working with the ACLU and uh, when dealing and uh, addressing the concerns of our houseless community, one of the uh, early on uh, things that was suggested is to allow them to shelter in place because um, it, it was the safest environment for a houseless community here on Kauai. So we've designated our campgrounds as a place for our houseless community to, to take shelter. Um, our main priority right now is, of course, to keep everybody healthy. Um, we don't want to see any new cases uh, leading up to May 3rd because that could really throw a, a wrench into our program. Uh, but our main priority is to get people back to work. And so we haven't um, decided when we're going to open up our parks because it's hard to 
stop people from congregating in groups in large gatherings. And so there's this balancing act that we're um, addressing as we move along. And so we're not at the point where we're looking at opening up our parks uh, as of today. All right, so let's uh, bring in some other questions here. I, um, I am being thoroughly provided with questions by all of our viewers, I might add. If you can see my desk, it's, it's loaded with papers. Uh, that's because our viewers are very in tune with what's happening in their areas. All right, so this is a question for, for you, um, Mayor Kim. Um, this is Joan asking about um, businesses being required to supply hand sa sanitizer for every customer which must be used before entering the store. She says, we've been trying to purchase additional hand sanitizer since January and have a limited supply, as do the hospitals. It's been impossible to purchase this in recent months. So a clarification was issued by your office, she says, uh, that a wash station sink could use an alternative. However, a grocery store and Kona restrooms have been locked. That does not resolve this sanitizing issue. Uh, and also, if she's throwing another note in here, a Maui distillery under investigation for violating laws by producing hand sanitizer. So what, how do you want to address um, her concerns? Uh, first of all, her concern is an absolute. Uh, when that was uh, done, we know there was going to be a problem. We stated uh, to all the media uh, that during this transition period, the fire department is our lead agency in regards to those things of inspection and helping agencies comply with those regulations. And we're going to do everything we can to work with the private sector in trying to get them hand sanitizers or do makeshift, like uh, I understand today, a store put in a sink on the outside uh, so they could wash their hands instead. But that is a problem. It's been a problem from day one, I think, for the whole state as far as the commercial sanitizers. But still, that is an important issue that we must pursue. And the shortage of it is there, and we're going to try to address it as best as we can. And I really think this is a question that could be applied to, to all mayors uh, as far as supplies and, and, and fulfilling requirements based on um, getting supplies you need to do so. Uh, maybe uh, we'll, we'll go to you, Mayor Victorino. Um, how would you like to, to address um, this concern as well when you're, there are uh, requirements in place um, to abide by sanitation or uh, cleaning or whatever else, but supplies are short? Uh, what's your response and what's the position right now for the county? Well, we've had challenges like every other county uh, our supplies right now are fairly uh, in good shape, but there was a point in time not long ago we were really struggling. And so we have certain companies that are now making sanitizer here in Maui. Uh, we have four companies that are making sanitizers right now. And so that's really helped us an awful lot. But the supply is still very thin when it comes to opening up everything. So that's why that's also part of the phasing in is what we can do with the supplies we have. PPEs, um, personal protective equipment, has been another challenge we've all faced, including our hospital. And so when all of that is in place, these are some of the triggers that will help us to systematically open up various businesses and as well as public facilities. And Mayor Caldwell, maybe I'll have a, a pose uh, this question to you um, similarly, but but slightly differently. When you, when you think about... Um, the limited supplies and, and how you deal with those limited supplies. I, I mean, there's, I, I hesitate to use the word competition, but um, there is um, a shortage and everybody, everybody needs it on each county. Uh, how is that, how are you working with your, your, your colleagues in the mayor's office and how are you um, managing this limited supply amongst all of you? So a good question. and. Um, so, Laura, initially there was huge challenges trying to get PPE, hand sanitizers, and all those different things we've discussed as mayors. It is getting a little easier as we proceed uh, because more and more uh, people are manufacturing these things. And so demand is being met not as quickly as they like, but it's getting better. But one thing we did as a city and county is instead of the police department competing with the fire department, competing with the emergency management services and ocean safety for supply, we pooled all of our resources and our funding, and we bulk ordered um, for the entire county for all of our first responders. And we found when we did that, one, we could get economies of scale and get the product price down a little bit. And two, we could compete because we found that when we were competing with other large cities, 
the suppliers would like to sell more in bulk to a bigger city. And so by combining, it helped us be a little bit more competitive um, in getting what we needed for our first responders on the island of Oahu. And to you, Mayor Kawakami, um, uh, you know, this question as well, uh, being able to get the supplies that you need, um, whether it be between the counties, between different states, between different departments, between different fields, you're hearing more and more now about, um, say, people within uh, transportation, travel, um, also uh, demanding uh, through their unions to be able to um, get the supplies and the protection they need as well, saying that they're exposed. How are you looking at this and how are you dealing with it? What's the complication for you? Well, I think in general, our complication is um, shared worldwide. We're all competing for the same commodities, and we have uh, supply chain uh, issues with getting enough N95 masks, uh, ventilators. We only have a handful of ICU beds. And so, you know, when people wonder why we took such a conservative approach, it's because from an economy of scale standpoint, Kauai is especially vulnerable. And this is where, you know, our legislature, our policymakers, myself, we have to start looking at some of those roadblocks now to see what kind of adjustments can be made. You know, our procurement code prohibit us from uh, entering into co-op agreements with bigger cities. And so, you know, the cost of an N95 to a small county like Kauai is going to be different than the city and county of Honolulu. And, um, you know, so these are the type of things as we try to juggle the day-to-day, we've got to be having this visionary outlook on how we want to adjust things moving forward. And uh, that's why we, we said real quick we're going to do a curfew because every time a firefighter or police officer has to respond to something unnecessary, they're going to burn through an N95 or burn through PPE that we just don't have. And so, you know, we have a good logistics team that keeps inventory that's constantly in communication with our health care providers and they have a good grasp as to where we are as far as inventory on these type of essential goods all right so let's talk a little bit about enforcement um this is a question it's to mayor caldwell but it really is to everyone uh some stores don't enforce customers wearing masks how do you enforce this requirement so i think what i want to ask of you is kind of a um a, a, you know enforcement in different ways, whether it be uh, people wearing masks, whether it be people um, uh, not gathering when they should. Uh, Tell me about how you're approaching enforcement in the different areas that need to be enforced, and what are you seeing happen? So number one, what we're seeing happen for the most part is people are complying. We wouldn't see one case, two cases, three cases on an island with a million people. And that credit goes to all the residents of this island who are complying with all the different requirements, including good physical distancing. Now, in those limited situations where you have non-compliance, it, it's raised in different ways. Sometimes people will actually call in and, and talk, report it to the police department who will go out and investigate. Sometimes we have a 768 city number, it's a hotline. It's been up from the beginning of this pandemic where you can call and someone will actually answer. And we'll get calls about businesses that are doing things that they shouldn't. That call center will actually call the business and say, we've gotten a number of complaints. We're asking you to come into compliance because if you don't, we're going to ask the police department to stop by and pay you a visit. And most of the time that gets people into compliance. So um, that's how we're doing it. And in the worst case scenarios, people are warned, cited, and then arrested. And you know, no business wants men and women in blue walking into an establishment and saying, you know, we're here because of a, you shouldn't be open or you're not following the procedures and requirements. And that gets compliance very quickly. And maybe I'll send it to you, uh, Mayor Kim. Uh, how are you handling compliance, enforcement, and, and what's becoming of that? What are, you, what are you seeing happen? I think like Maui and Kauai, we're still uh, a little bit of a small town attitude, uh, which is great in cases like this. And, I think it's typical of uh, what Mayor Caldwell said, but on a smaller scale, obviously, because of smaller population. And for the most part, I think uh, we all agree that the community is really being very cooperative. Uh, however, when you do get the individuals that do not and refuse to believe, uh, obey policies, the uh, police steps in and have cited people. 
but I do want to emphasize here that I think Mayor Calvo was saying the same thing, that for the most part, the community has been very, very cooperative. They know this is a community issue, and we all got to do our part. And Mayor Victorino, where are you seeing um, the need for enforcement? Are you, where are people complying? What's, uh, how are you handling um, enforcement for people wearing masks, people gathering, not being in areas they shouldn't be in? Well, the vast majority of the population has abided by the policies and rules set in these various proclamations. Uh, we've seen a few that have, you know, taken advantage or are trying their best to uh, stretch the rule or stretch the policy. And our police and along with uh, DLNR, as well as uh, some of the uh, national park personnel, have been really helpful in this area. And a lot of times, just talking to them, warning them, many of them comply immediately. They either forget or they, they understand that they've gone past the limit and they come right back and comply. So we've not had that many challenges, but the ones we've had, we've made a few uh, arrests, some citations and also illegal uh, uh, visitors coming in, trying to uh, come, come into Maui County uh, with no ID, no resident, no uh, place of uh, lodging. And we've been able to either arrest them or turn them around and send them right back. So I think all the counties have faced that same similar issue. And I believe most of us, our population in general, have really complied. And most of the stores have people sitting outside of the entry saying, no, you can't enter unless you have a mask. And many times they have a mask to give them. And so compliance is, is pretty much pretty much under, under control here in Maui County. So Mayor Kawakami, you started um, early as far as some of the restrictions, um, the curfew that went into place early on. Um, talk a little bit more about that. And also uh, same question as far as what, are you, what you're seeing as far as people abiding by that. I almost wonder if it's been um, tougher for folks because it was stricter from early on or if it's had the opposite effect? Um, no, for the most part, uh, Kauai is still very much uh, made up of people that have been through their fair share of disasters. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, the, the rural nature and um, just the fact that, you know, we, we know each other um, across the island uh, the compliance is um, for majority of our people. Um, they they know that uh, that we're doing these things for a certain reason. So, for the most part, people have been in compliance. And I understand that there's so many moving parts right now, and so it can at times create confusion. But you know, our enforcement arm with KPD, you know, and with the state law enforcement branches, with DoCare, the sheriffs, and now with the National Guard has really um, helped to have just that physical presence out there just to let the few bad apples know that we are, uh, that we're serious. And uh, we are issuing citations and especially with the incoming arrivals still coming in, although it's a trickle, uh, we have checkpoints, we have our police officers actually showing up to returning residents to make sure that they are complying with the quarantine and and for the most part I have to tip my hat off to our law enforcement uh, branches for doing just a wonderful job and keeping a positive attitude but I have to give a shout out to the people of Kauai for understanding that although it's difficult times that these sacrifices need to be made and I want to thank them for participating and very much being a part of this community-led movement to battle against COVID-19. All right, so I'm going to move to, um, uh, this is related to enforcement, but also to a little bit more toward tourism and visitors here, because not surprising, we have quite a few questions about that. Um, and so I think one here, uh, it's clear social distancing masks will be effective in smothering the threat. In a closed society, unfortunately, uh, this is from, from Michael uh, Schultz, once uh, the travel get gates are open, we no longer have a closed society and are open to new escalations. What uh, what are we looking at as far as uh, reacting to the tourist industry while to reactivate our tourist industry while protecting us? And hold that thought for a minute because I'm going to there's so many questions we have about tourism. I'm going to kind of fold a couple of them together. If we get our own curve down in Hawaii and then allow visitors back in from states that haven't brought uh, haven't brought theirs down, 
uh, are we are we at risk here? So what measures are in place uh, for criteria for criteria to let that happen? And I'll throw one more in there. But again, you get the gist of it. This really is about um, how we're looking at um, reopening uh, and allowing visitors back and 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 re-energizing our tourism industry. One more from Joanne. As your county opens, more visitors are likely to come. Do you have in place the capacity to screen incoming travelers to stop viruses from reinfecting your island? So, so again, I think that the blanket question here is about at this point, uh, when everybody is, uh, we have a huge industry, the tourism industry here, um, and trying to figure out what to do about jobs, trying to figure out about how to allow visitors back in. What is your stance right now, and how are you looking forward for the next, say, few weeks or months or so? Maybe we'll start with, um, uh, we'll start with Mayor Caldwell on that one. So I think the visitor industry is going to be one of the last things that's going to open up. And it's the most difficult one, and it's also one of the most important because it is the main economic dri driver for the state of Hawaii. It is for the sitting county of Honolulu. But there's just so much risk because when when we have visitors coming in, they could be bringing the virus in. And until we know that the visitors are not infected, to allow them back in could bring a spike in the number of cases. And because of the Governor Ige's, you know, I think nation-leading 14-day quarantine for all people coming outside of the state, and then the quarantine between islands is what has contributed to, I think, a flattening of the curve along with all the stay-at-home orders, the social distancing, and everything that everyone has done on, in each of our counties. Um, so I, for one, would, would be very cautious about opening up to visitors right now. And it's an issue not just for the state of Hawaii and for the mayors. It's an issue, uh, issue on a national level. You know, how do we screen people who are traveling who may have that virus? And where do we stop them? Do they come to Hawaii and we test them and quarantine them at the airport? And where do we keep them until they, we get their test results back? Or do we not let them even come onto a plane until they get some kind of health clearance? Kind of like we do when you bring dogs to the state, right? You have to go through quarantine and you have to make sure they're not carrying rabies. You know, I don't want to, you know, treat visitors like that. But, but how do we protect ourselves, the residents of all our counties, from people coming in who may be contagious. And we need a test that can do that. So right now we have the standard cotton swab test that, that you know, you take it takes a while to get the result. And now you have the antibody tests that are being proposed. But again, it's we're not there yet. It takes a while to complete the test. You know, it takes maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes to do one test. You have a flight arriving of 300 people. It'd be very hard to manage that. So we, we need some technology here to help. And I think we need to work with our federal partners and our state partners because the airports are not owned or controlled by the counties. They're a state function. We look to them as to be the gatekeeper to preventing people coming in who may be infectious. And I think we're going to circle back to um, 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 talking about testing in a little bit here, but I want to let uh, some of the other mayors uh, jump in and, and address that as far as what the discussion is at the table right now within your county for um, allowing visitors back into the county, into the state. What is being discussed? Are there any timelines in place? Um, talk about that. Maybe um, we'll go to Mayor Kawakami. Maybe you can go ahead and jump in. Yeah, I have to agree. I think the, the visitor industry will probably be the last uh, economic sector um, to, to reopen because uh, first and foremost, uh, our top priority is to protect the health and safety of our people. And uh, we understand the economy is collapsing, but it's collapsing worldwide. And, uh, you know, the reality is until we manage the situation, it's hard to juggle both. And, uh, you know, the fortunate thing with our incident command structure is we have different branches working concurrently. And so we partner with Sue Kanoho from the Koi Visitors Bureau, and she uh, has a good network of uh, folks in the visitor industry that are already formulating uh, in their mind what are best practices. We have uh, Dr. Janet Berman and Lauren Guest and their staff also layering um, what best practices would look like. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, factors that yet uh, remain to be seen as far as how do we ensure 
that one, I mean, one, what we're hoping for is the race to find a vaccine and an antiviral medication, sort of like Tamiflu, um, to be able to protect people uh, from COVID-19. So all of these things have to fall in place. Uh, what our focus is right now is just a staged approach to reopen a local economy, meaning construction, uh, you know, our food service uh, establishments. Uh, whatever we can generate locally, agriculture, um, is what we're focused on uh, right now. We do have in our Office of Economic Development our economic recovery team focusing both on short-term immediate relief and also that long-term vision that uh, we would like to see Kauai look like moving forward. So, Mayor Victorino, um, there's a question from... Um from Margaret in Lanai, Lanai City saying, Lanai is virus-free but still in lockdown, undergoing the same restrictions. Why, she's wondering. So it kind of goes back to sort of the, the restrictions that are in place for visitors. Um, I think it kind of wraps into uh, possibly your answer as to, um, you know, what's at the decision table? What's being discussed right now as far as how you're going to um, um, think about uh, when visitors can come back and what, what needs to be in place to allow that to happen? Well, for the island of Lanai, as you're well aware of, it's a privately owned island. Pretty much 97% of the island is controlled by Oracle founder and uh, CEO uh, Larry Ellison. And he has been very generous in the sense of paying everyone that works for Palama Lanai uh, their entire salaries for the month of April. And we're hoping he'll continue that into May because he decided to shut the hotels way back in March when all of this started. And he's very much in tune to environmental issues, and he's very uh, well, well-versed well in that area. And so I think Lanai, the reason they're still locked down is because they wanted it that way. They're, they're asking to keep, don't bring anyone in, don't allow any outsiders in, and they will keep COVID free. And so far, it's proved correctly. Uh, as far as the rest of our, our islands, Molokai and uh, Maui, especially Maui, where the tourist industry and the visit industry has been such an integral part of where we are and where we've come from, we need now to look and turn towards agriculture because we do have an immense amount of land that Mahi Pono and other farmers are now cultivating. We've turned what was a disaster from farmers who sold only to the hotels. Now we've turned them and buying the products or the produce and giving it to our people in need, those who are unemployed, We've given out something like 35 to 4,000 bags of produce to various areas throughout the county of Maui. And we continue looking for these aspects that we want the farmers to start growing more, become more self-sufficient, and Maui has a grand opportunity. That was all part of our plan. We were rebranding Maui back in when I first walked into office last year, but the fires delayed some of that. This year is COVID-19. But COVID-19 has actually been a blessing in disguise if you look at where we can now take our, take our county and move it into what I call a more diversified, well-rounded economy. And so we're, we're, I've got different task force and different uh, committees working on various recovery levels starting from like the next week or two weeks from now all the way for up through five years from today. We need to project and start to move knowing that we have a new norm coming. We're going to do business differently throughout this state and throughout this county. And so we better be prepared to make that change and welcome the visitors when they're ready to come back, but make sure the health and safety of our, our, our residents is the priority in anything and everything we do. And no doubt we can circle back to that as well as far as moving forward, how we can look at uh, readjusting our, our industry. And that was the to complete uh, Michael from Mililani, his question saying, what outside-the-box concepts are all the mayors doing to reactivate our tourist industry while protecting us? Hold that thought for a little bit because no doubt we'll be getting back to that. But I wanted to kind of wrap up uh, what we were discussing as far as um, bringing uh, tourism, or opening it back up to visitors and turning it over to uh, to Mayor uh to Mayor Kim, and I'm going to throw in a, uh, it's really more of a statement from Bob from Hawaii Kai, saying, Hawaii Kai, saying it seems to be the only way to defeat the virus is to, to maintain strict measures and not open up until we are at zero, if we can measure that. If we slowly open up, we run the risk 
of never getting rid of the virus. So it shows the scope of concern uh, from our residents here. So this is also uh, for you, uh, Mayor Kim, so you can respond to both if you so choose. Kea saying, who is responsible for checking that visitors are in quarantine when they come to the Big Island? So I think this is all kind of wrapped around um, sort of getting in your head a little bit as far as addressing what are you thinking and what's on the discussion table when you think about at some point uh, reopening to visitors? What needs to happen? I'd like to take this opportunity to put a caution on all of us, and I do mean all of us, that we don't get too impatient in trying to get back to our economy and the normalcy if there will ever be a normal again. I think we should all know that we're learning why we, I mean that of science, the medical science and the physical science of what we're dealing with. All we have to do is uh, turn the clock back a month and what the world believed about the coronavirus and the kind of policies that were made based on that. I do mean this sincerely. Uh, yes, emphasis on planning for recovery has to be, that is part of our responsibility to, of the economy. That, that is so automatic that we have to do that. But at this point of what we know and what we're learning, uh, I think we better be a little more patient on where we're going to go on that and uh, see if we can more or less arrest what is going on. And I think the world of science and medicine is learning much more today, and we're going to have to adjust to that before we talk uh, in regards to recovery. But on the whole, I think we all agree uh, we are economy of tourism, and that's a very complex issue because tourism means people from the outside. And we all know here that we were at one time in less just a few weeks ago at zero on all counts, and almost all of the uh, people identified positive were from because they went somewhere and came back and got it, or outsiders coming in as tourists and uh, left it here. And I'll close with this. It's a very difficult time. We all know that. I ask all of us to be patient. Uh, before we start taking definitive steps of recovery. We do know that is something we need to address, but we still need to be patient on where we go and how we get there. Thank you, Mayor Kim. So I, uh, um, I'm, I've got one more question I want to um, include here, and this is a, a little heat for you, uh, Mayor Caldwell, in, in a recent statement you made about um, how and when and what way we might open up um, uh, or lift some of the restrictions. This is from uh, Kalani Girl saying, I'm a Kauai resident born and raised and very thankful that uh, our mayor was brave and strong to set restrictions in place that has proven to flatten the curve. Why does Mayor Caldwell think he can suggest to use our island as a test case? And she's not too happy about that. So I want to, I know it's been out there in, in the um, news a little bit, so I want to give you a chance to respond, Mayor Caldwell. That was a question that was asked to me by Hawaii News Now and the very question you're asking all of us and how do you open up the, the economy to tourism? And um, as I mentioned to you today, it was about, you know, it's the hardest thing to address and how we do it. And as was mentioned by everybody, basically, it's, it, you, we don't want to do it until we see the number of cases uh, flat to going away. And until it's zero, it's very difficult to talk about opening up the, the economy to tourism. And so those islands that lead at zero, and if we were leading at zero, um, you know, it would be something I think we could start to talk about. You still have to talk about how you protect your residents from those coming in with the virus. And that's what I meant. Um, the way I stated it may not have been the most artful, um, but I didn't mean it in any insulting way. And if I, if the people of Kauai somehow took it that way, I apologize, and including to America, I'll call me. Um, but again, it's the broader issue is how do you open up, up your economy to tourism and at least for me as mayor, I don't think it's something we talk about until we see the virus at, at, at some zero level for some period of time. And Oahu's not there yet. We're very low. Uh, we've had two days of zero. Today we had one. And so we're going to have to wait and see. And if Oahu's at zero, I think we could start to look at what do we do to start reopening the economy to tourism. And, it, and initially, by the way, Laura, it could be local. People going, you know, staycations here in Hawaii coming, you know, on Oahu, going to hotels. But that right now, I don't think that is something we'd be recommending because we still have not licked the virus on this island. 
So uh, we're going to circle back around uh, definitely to talking about uh, testing as well as sort of looking forward um, how we're kind of going to address uh, what we're seeing uh, or predicting that may happen next. But before, I've, I've got a number of kind of random questions, so I want to get to, to some of these viewer questions. And this one is for uh, Mayor Victorino saying, uh, what's happening at Maui Memorial Hospital? Uh, believing that there's more infections every day and definitely a, a lot of concern uh, early on as far as um, how things were managed and addressed at, at Maui Memorial Hospital because there were some clusters there that broke out. Um, ad address their concern as far as what's been happening at Maui Memorial and um, what the situation is now and how you're looking at moving forward to make sure that that uh, doesn't continue to be um, something that stands out. The, the State Board of Health has been monitoring the hospital. They have brought in some experts from the mainland to Kaiser and other healthcare uh, systems. They have made a, a lot of sanitation cleanup and PPEs now are much more abundant or at least available for their staff, which was one of the big challenges. They were waiting for the big outbreak. They were waiting for the spike, and we all were waiting for that. And they felt it was coming, and so they held back. And maybe they made a misstep there. And now it's uh, shown some residual effects that none of us are happy with. So I, I see that and the Department of Health and others working very diligently to put back confidence in the health care of our hospital and the health care system throughout Maui County. And also there, you know, it's all working one as one. So this one went uh, dead. I, I, please. Uh, I don't know if there's a battery you need for that or something. It went dead. Okay. Can you still yeah, but if this one goes dead, if they're not. I'm not sure if there's a way to. It happens. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, um, Mayor Caldwell, if you it can happens. hear, you know, your mic, the mic is still yes. hot. We can still hear you talking, Mayor Caldwell. Okay. That's okay, Kirk. Uh, so anyhow. Sorry. So I feel, a lot, I, I feel a lot more confident in what's happening there, but we're not out of the woods yet, and we keep monitoring them. Uh, the State Department of Health, other uh, entities are really being throwing their support behind of them. So we'll see what happens. That's why for us, just like what Kirk mentioned earlier, um, Mayor Caldwell said Honolulu is not ready. Well, Maui County is not ready yet. So until we get all of these cluster, that cluster under control, and that's been the biggest one, and we have a number of days of zero, I too would be hesitant to reopen uh, but phasing in smaller businesses, local businesses, our agricultural business, uh, I think are, are keys to getting our economy started up slowly but surely. So this question is for Mayor Kawakami. Um, Beverly asking, how will you monitor vacation rentals in quarantine who are arriving on island to stay in the units that they own? Actually, that's from Frank in Lihue. Well, we uh, prohibited the use of vacation rentals during this uh period. And so, um, like everything else, our law enforcement arm, uh, through the incident action plans that are formulated um, every week, have a process to uh, make sure that they're enforcing in general. But uh, I want to make it clear that very early on, uh, we, uh, we prohibited the use of vacation rentals. And that was just to uh, make it uh, well, you know, we had to get creative to make Koi very unappealing because we knew if we keep our numbers low, people would sort of see uh, this island with limited resources that we have a challenge of just uh, providing for our day-to-day -day residents. We, we knew that people were going to come and see this as a, as a safe haven, and right now is not the right time or place. And, you know, I, I know that Mayor Caldwell had made some statements, and, you know, i got to get it off um, that we are great friends and we do – um, work well together and uh, you know Mayor Caudle and I will have a conversation when uh, it fits into his schedule but I got to say that we got to be careful with our words because you know we're over here uh, doing everything we can to keep things calm and it's it's already a situation that has you know a level of fear um, that's instilled in everyone and um, you know when, when our people hear that uh, perhaps they're going to be uh, like the sacrificial lamb or the the testing ground, what it does, I think the unintended consequences, it ties up our phone lines with concerned citizens. It, it ties up our resources. And, you know, like I said, it's like toothpaste. You know, once you squeeze it out, it's hard to get it back in. But 
Um, I just wanted to clear the air that we all work well as mayors. Um, you know, sometimes uh, when things are moving quickly, uh, we may say things that have unintentional consequences. But in this case, um, I've got to just be honest, it was extremely frustrating because, you know, we're doing everything we can to make just to provide our people with security, to make them feel that they're safe. I mean, those are just basic necessities. And um, it was really disruptive. But I just wanted to say that uh, we all um, don't always agree, but as mayors, we work well together. Um, and Mayor Caldwell and I will have a conversation and, um, and we'll work things out. Uh, but I gotta say that that was uh, something that was uh, uh, it was frustrating. I, I feel I feel I want to give uh, Mayor Caldwell. I, I appreciate you responding initially, and I think uh, your response was um, was genuine. I wasn't sure if there was anything else you wanted to to say. I'm, no, I'm uh, you know, both, we both of us, both of us have our. We both have our. We each have each other's personal phone numbers, and we're always <laughs> available to talk to each other. And I look forward to that conversation anytime. No doubt. All right. So um, this is a question from um, Richard and Kyla Wakona. It really is is for everyone, but I'm going to throw this to Mayor Kim. Uh, and this is definitely a concern for a lot of people as far as. Um, um, crime being committed in some shape or form. One, uh, uh, this question is posed in this particular way. If someone infected knowingly goes out, infects others, will they be prosecuted the same way as, as a drunk driving offender? So I think they're just talking about people uh, violating the rules in general and, and, and more specifically how they may or may not be prosecuted if they, if they break the rules. Mayor Kim? We had a, Do you have an extra one? an incident similar to that uh, you know, case you're talking about, as far as example, what would you do? We had someone that left their place of premises of, uh, as far as quarantine, and I linked it to a situation where we had uh, in the, the AIDS case for the United States and the world. And I consider if a person knowingly goes out and does harm to people in regards to uh, this virus, uh, I consider that uh, a criminal offense, and they should be prosecuted accordingly. All right, so and this one is for um, for Mayor Caldwell. He said, I walk along uh, Diamond Head Road. At least 90% of people, uh, he says, are exercising along the road and not wearing masks. Is this voluntary compliance sufficient to adequately protect people? So I guess he's, he's, he's thinking about people who are um, out in maybe a little bit more open spaces, but still a lot of people around in the vicinity. What's your response to that? So... Um, the recommendation of the city and county of Honolulu is that if you go out in public, you should, we rec highly recommend you wear a mask. If you go into a business, you're mandated to wear a mask, both the employees and the customers or you interface with the public, and you're mandated to wear a mask on our public transportation, both the bus and the handyman. Um, but when you're exercising, particularly if you're running or, or, or jogging or walking quickly, sometimes mask wearing is more difficult. And so we leave it up to the individual to make that determination. And, you know, many times on the weekend, I'll drive by Diamond Head Lookout and see so many people now because our parks were closed. The only way they could get exercise was in our city streets and roads and sidewalks. And so many people, some walking were wearing masks for sure, but many of those who were jogging or speed walking were not. And, you know, it's just the nature of the type of exercise they're doing. Uh, but again, you know, for the most part, people are wearing masks to protect themselves and each other um, when they can out in public. Okay, so this is to, to Mayor Kim, but this really may apply to, to all of the mayors, um, saying, my home is a condo on the Big Island. The property has been termed as a condo slash hotel. We are still open for business, bookings, receiving, and housing guests. What are the parameters for this type of business? So. I want you to help them out in defining what type of accommodation businesses should be open and which should be closed. Well, I think we all follow the governor's uh, stay-at-home policies in regards to which identifies uh, what will be uh, allowed to open and operate at hotels and motels. As I think all the mayors here indicated, the vacation rentals are not included as uh, something that can be open. And I think in regards to simple answer to that, you know, uh, 
they can call in here and we will go over a particular case where they fall within the allowed uh, businesses to stay open. So this is to uh, Mayor Caldwell, really, but this also could be to, to all mayors uh, as well. Uh, maybe we could ask uh, Mayor Victorino about this as well. Why don't bus drivers uh, tell riders to put on their masks before they get on the bus? Uh, and or I would imagine they should always be wearing masks as well. What, what's that situation within um, the bus transportation that, that needs to be happening and or should be happening? So one, all bus drivers should be wearing masks, and they've been provided masks to wear both by the Teamsters Union and, and by OTS. And so I'd be surprised if bus drivers are not wearing masks. In addition, we're trying to protect the bus drivers by installing some form of shower curtains so they, they don't come into contact with, with, um, with people who may cough or sneeze in their area. Um, in addition, we provided in the first week of, of mandating masks and mass transportation, free masks to, to riders. And we gave a two-day warning to people that they need to mask up, wear facial covering before they get on the bus. And for the most part, people are doing that. Now, after the two-day warning, if you are not wearing a mask, you could be asked not to get on the bus until you get a mask on. But for the most part, people are complying. And, and, and so we are very appreciative again that People are doing this to protect themselves, the other bus riders, and our and our hardworking bus drivers and and um, handy van drivers. Uh, Mayor Victorino, is that also happening in your county as well? Is that the same uh, position? All the bus drivers are required to wear masks, and we have been passing out masks as uh, passengers are boarding the bus to help make sure everyone wears a mask. We're going to be doing that for the next week or so. And after that, if you don't have a mask, then we'll ask you not to board the bus. So we are trying to look for ways of protecting the, not only the bus driver, but all the passengers. We have definitive lines. We have tape on the bus making six-foot um, uh, distancing. And the bus drivers we put up and are continuing to put up plexiglass uh, backing so that uh, there's no you know, real way that uh, germs can spread to them from behind the bus. From the side, absolutely, that's not been something we've been able to figure out, but we're working on some solutions in that area also. Okay, a question also uh, for you, Mayor Victorino from Dana in Honolulu, um, and then a very loosely related question will follow for uh, Mayor Kim uh, about that. So uh, Dana's asking, uh, the brewery that gave away hand sanitizer, she wants to know if those charges have been dropped. Uh, that is still under investigation. It is not because they are making sanitizers. Uh, there were some uh, challenges in what happened, and I've intervened with the, uh, insure, uh, what do you call that, the Liquor Commission, and we're working on a solution right now. So we'll have it resolved very soon, but at this point, it hasn't been finalized yet. Okay, and to Mayor Kim, this is from Sherry and Volcano saying, can commercial establishments have rubbing alcohol or other alternatives for those who have allergic reactions to hand sanitizer? So going back again to the, to the shortage, businesses trying to um, make hand sanitizer and wondering about alternatives. Well, for sure, I'd like to cover a little bit as an example of how far we've come. Uh, face masks and face coverings, as we refer to it now, was very short. And I just got word today that uh, Carissa of Oahu is donating thousands of face masks to the island of Hawaii. And the number of people who are donating masks made at home is getting to be kind of stylish that you choose to see some of them. In regards to hand sanitizer, it's just the same. You know, we've had the companies come in and suggest their ways. We have someone assigned from civil defense to follow up on all of these to see uh, what I don't want to call them homemade, but what other than uh, commercial products can be used for sanitizers. And I think uh, it's working out pretty well, and I think we'll get there where that will not be a problem. Okay, we can't, we can't quite get off the hand sanitizer subject just yet. We've got one more question, and this is a, a follow-up question for Mayor Victorino. Uh, uh, David saying, it's my opinion that the Liquor Commission has way too much time on their hands. Why else would they investigate a harmless oversight on the part of Maui Brewing as they gave Maui made sanitizer to persons that bought them, bought anything from them, not just liquor? I, uh, we're following that, um, the subject being discussed earlier. So him kind of thinking, well, okay, uh, maybe this is something we needed, you needed to um, address, but in the context of things that are happening right now, what was the position 
or what, what was your thinking going into um, um, how you came down on this issue? Well, I didn't come down on it. The Liquor Commission as acts as an autonomous uh, fair, fair correction. Uh, okay, so let's get that corrected. And all of us as mayors have no uh, jurisdictional power over the Liquor Commission and their uh, the liquor departments. But, however, with that being said, I have met and talked with Garrett, and 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 we are working something out. And I think we'll we'll find out in the next couple of days what can happen and what we will do to resolve this matter. I want this to be something of a good nature where people can get sanitizer because he's converted his machines from making uh, beer and alcohol to making sanitizing uh, lotions for which we were in dire need of. And so is uh, Ocean Vodka as well as Haile Miley uh, Distillery. So there are others right here on the island that are doing it. So we're working together to resolve this issue. So. That's all. That's all I have to say about that at this point. Fair enough. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Okay. So this is. I'm sorry. No, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so this is from from Barbara uh, on inner island travel. Let's let's uh, pivot a little bit to that. Uh, the discussion sounds as though we won't be able to travel inter island uh, as well due to virus potentially spreading. Uh, nor can residents go to the mainland. How are we addressing that? Uh, the airlines say they're cutting neighbor islands uh, trans Pacific flights. So we'll have to funnel through Oahu. So um, what's everyone's uh, position on that? I'm not sure who wants to start on that one. I'll start on that one. That reminds me of Back to the Future. We used to do that. There was no direct flights from Maui. We had to go to Oahu to fly off to the mainland. And so we've gone back to what we used to do, and maybe that's the new norm. Maybe that's what's going to occur throughout the state. The smaller islands may not get direct flights from from the mainland or from anywhere else, and we have to funnel through Oahu. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen, but it may. And I used to do that, and many of us did it when we were younger, and we can continue doing it today. I want to turn to Mayor Kawakami on that because um, uh, that would no doubt impact uh, Kauai County, also being a, a new mayor for the county. Uh, what is your response to that? People shouldn't be traveling they should be staying at home unless it's absolutely necessary to um, go to a doctor's appointment that is critical or if you have to uh, take care of family. I mean, it's really simple. There's a pandemic going on. You shouldn't be traveling. If you're afraid, if you stay at home, you're pretty safe. That, that would be our position. And not to be blunt about it, but um, it, it's amazing to hear uh, people still trying to come to Kauai um, that that don't live here, and uh, I hate to to just be straightforward about it, but um, that's the bottom line. It's it's not the right time or place to be traveling around if you don't have to. And you know, I wonder if uh, I think Mayor uh, Victorino addressed what I would imagine is part of Barbara's concern. Uh, you know that there's the restrictions that are in place now, but. Because of uh, what may become uh, of this over the next few months, maybe the next few years, as far as uh, travel having to be scaled back in, even when travel is allowed to happen, um, are there concerns about what may um, uh, be a result of this as far as uh, flights being canceled permanently or for some, some period of time, even after those restrictions have been lifted? Maybe I'll turn that one to uh, Mayor Kim. Yeah, I think it's uh, common knowledge with all the mayors here that the three mayors uh, requested uh, that all flights uh, to the state of Hawaii be banned. And I decided not to sign it because I felt that the provisions that are in now in regards to uh, quarantine or 14 days if you come here uh, would automatically stop the vast majority of travelers here. Unfortunately for some, I think uh, it was a total thing, like Japan canceled. Uh, if you look at the daily count, the number of uh, passengers coming to Hawaii is very, very few. And I, th I thought in not signing that we could control it very well uh, with a system of checks uh, to make sure that these people are quarantined. In regards to why, I don't think it's wise at this time to cut off all travel to the state of Hawaii. The reinstatement of it, there could be a problem. We were just talking about recovery. Uh, the 
flight through is a big part of recovery, and I, I stand that, you know, Pat, in regards to why he didn't sign it. In regards to travel back here, I think that is something which, you know, it's going to work on. We have to work on because the biggest thing here is of economics. Uh, the airlines, from I think, was riding on a fairly good level as far as uh, financial benefits have now come to probably the lowest in uh, uh, airline history, and to just to bring back any kind of normalcy as far as trouble to the state of Hawaii is going to be a task when we can do that. Okay, I'm going to pivot a little bit here. Uh, uh, Laura? This, oh, I'm sorry. Go Laura? Ahead. Mr. Kirk, I just wanted to clarify something that Mayor Kim said. The letter we wrote to President Trump uh, did not ask for flights to be banned to Hawaii. It asked that tourists be prohibited from coming to Hawaii. Uh, we definitely want flights. We want the belly cargo, first of all. We want our returning residents to be able to come here and, of course, flight crews. But as a result of visitors continuing to come here, particularly with low fares and the fact that we have probably the lowest percentage of COVID-19 cases in the country, we continue to divert in a, a lot of resources to tracking down a few bad actors, and whether it be this island or Kauai or other islands. And it would have been a lot easier to just stop visitors coming right now until we resolve this crisis. But flights, we didn't want to ban flights. We wanted to ban tourists coming to Hawaii. I'm going to let you uh, continue, Mayor Caldwell, because this question um, uh, it really is to, to all counties, but this is uh, addressed to you, both these questions actually having to do with the homeless. Uh, so uh, uh, Sunny from Waimanalo is saying, we're not allowed to congregate on beaches, but homeless people live there for free. Um, uh, why aren't we forcing them out? And also Brenda from Honolulu saying, I drove down Dillingham Boulevard today and the streets were lined with the homeless. Their tents are touching each other. The people are gathering with their friends. None of them are social distancing or wearing masks. Has the homeless community been tested for COVID-19? What are the results? Uh, is it logic correct to, to social distance? And uh, what's the situation? So I think a plethora of questions about what's happening with the homeless population, people being concerned that that's not being addressed. Your response, Mayor Caldwell? So since I became mayor, we, we were having a program called Compassionate Disruption, where we did enforce against homeless, but also provided them forms of housing. And it, it worked part, partly, but it was not perfect. Um, with the pandemic striking our country, the CDC issued uh, guidelines that said they prefer that we not enforce against the homeless um, until we have a place for them to go. Because as we enforce and break up large encampments, they can spread into smaller encampments. And if they were infected with COVID-19, it could be transferred. So on the basis of um, CDC guidelines and also the ACL writing a letter to the city and county of Honolulu asking us to stop to enforce, we did. Um, in the meantime, we've now stood up what we call POST, um, working with the Honolulu Police Department. In fact, they lead at Captain Lambert, um, set up this program. Right now it's at Kehe Lagoon, where we have a place for homeless to go um, and while they're being tested for COVID-19. And they're quarantined there for um, 14 days. And if they're they're not shown to be positive, they go into a second phase at Kea Lagoon where they have, they can move around. Now, if they go outside, because it's a voluntary program, and uh, they can't come back in uh, for another 14 days. But while there, they're fed uh, two meals a day. They can bring their pets. They can store their property. Uh, there's a place to take a shower. They're giving toiletry articles. And the program is working really well. Um, we have now three phases. We're looking for a fourth phase and another park. As a result of that, we started to sol slowly enforce in places where we have concerns about social distancing, such on D as on Dillingham. It is, it is a real problem there. Uh, there's no public restrooms there. Uh, we don't know where they're using the, the bathroom. Um, and, and there's a problem that we need to start to address better. Um, they all, so I think what Sunny said in Waimanalo, similar problem there. Um, we do have restrooms close to where they are. They're open 24-7, and the homeless can, can use those restrooms. But we need to do some enforcement in order to encourage greater social distancing, because right now they're just on top of each other. 
So I have a couple of medical questions here, and, and again, this really could be for all of the mayors. And if I, and I know I'm moving around some of these different topics here, and if you want to tag on to uh, a, a topic we had uh, previous to this question, feel free. But let me ask this of Mayor Victorino. There's a couple of questions on um, uh, non-emergency surgery, when they will be allowing that, plans to reopen dental offices, for example. Where are you taking your lead as far as um, – what, do you, what you're allowing as far as the medical community to move forward and continue uh, uh, moving back toward normal business? Well, we have a medical group led by Dr. Lauren Pang, which is our medical officer here for the State Department of Health. We also have Dr. Wolfgang Miller that's been assisting me with um, ideas oh and um, giving, I don't know if giving us died. a... I won't hear you more, right? <laughs> Uh, even us, We're uh, still hearing, your, uh, hearing you, uh, Mayor Caldwell, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Giving us lead as far as, as far as the medical community is concerned. And I've been meeting with different groups of medical professionals. And so both the dentistry and as well as the medical community, as far as elective surgeries and, and, and surgeries and other visits that are necessary, we are looking at opening up that next month to give people an opportunity to get things or get surgeries or get other treatments that they have been holding off on. So long as it's not been life-threatening and could be put off, they have put it off. So I think it's only fair we start moving in that direction. However, there's still that fear by a lot of the population, the people of Maui County, that if they go into a doctor's office or they go into a clinic, could there be COVID uh, viruses spread in that clinic from other sick people? So we're trying to see how we can balance. I know Kaiser does a great job. When you get there, they ask you a whole bunch of questions. They take your temperature. If any signs or any uh, indication that you may be sick, they scoot you off into another room and, and, and start to work on you. So I believe the medical profession also has put a lot of protocols in place, and I'm satisfied that they're ready to open up. So that's another area that between the dentists and as well as the uh, medical care clinics and others, that we can allow them to do now elective uh, procedures and surgeries that have many have put off for the last two months. So I'll ask this about, uh, I've got to move through this fairly quickly. We're running out of time, and we still have quite a few questions. PPEs, people going back to this a, 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 a bit. Uh, long-time supplier, plenty of PE, PPEs saying they can consolidate, uh, saying that they, be, they are able to uh, supply and create economies of scale. Uh, maybe I'll let uh, Mayor Kawakami jump in on that one. What you're looking at as far as being able to, um, uh, what you're discussing as far as being able to consolidate uh, as counties, um, to get um, better arrangements for supplies, whether it be PPE or other types of um, essentials? I'm going to try my best. I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question uh, clearly, but, you know, as far as um, the coordination efforts, uh, you know, we coordinate with HAIMA under the guidance and uh, direction of uh, General Hara as far as coordinating um, those type of uh, collaborative efforts. And I think that's... Um, key to any uh, type of coordinated effort, and it's difficult because of social distancing and because, you know, we're all on different islands. Um, I think at times things move so quickly that uh, we always got to remind ourselves to channel our communication through the protocol and the structure that's in place. And so as far as uh, coordinated efforts, uh, you know, we have our logistics team, our ops team, uh, the whole uh, emergency management um, team coordinating uh, very closely with HAIMA as far as those type of resources and so that uh, if any island uh, should have a need, um, we would be able to shift and pivot uh, those resources accordingly because uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're all in this together, even though we're separated by ocean. Uh, we're one island state and, um, and, and we're all in this together. So we really only have a, a couple of minutes left, so we maybe have about 30 seconds uh, each for the mayors. And I, I think really the question probably just needs to be, as we're moving forward here, a lot of these questions, whether they're asking about what we're doing about testing, what we're doing about um, restoring the tourism industry, I think people are just looking for some final thoughts from you on um, as we move forward, what's top of mind for you and how are you um, um, thinking of the next few steps? Maybe we'll go to Mayor Kim on this one. You know, on this island, we have a couple private clinics, Ali and Premier, that have been conducting tests throughout the island. 
and I, I'm really quite pleased with them. It's a coordination with the uh, county government in resource assistance, but they run the clinic themselves, and the state obviously has theirs. At, at this point, I think the problem is not just uh, uh, just testing, it's the kind of testing we need. I think our problem right now is in regards to who to test, uh, because what has been, I tried to put it out earlier, is a little frightening to learn of the danger of those who are asymptomatic. And the uh, last few that was tested on this island because of their occupational relationship was totally asymptomatic and found out to be positive. So my question in regards to testing is, you know, a nationwide kind of need. Uh, I think that is being reviewed by everyone on who to test, when to test, and, and those things. But as far as right now, I think the uh, private clinics in the state is doing a decent job as far as testing here. But like everybody and else, you wish you had more. And I think we got some final thoughts from Mayor Kawakami. So we got about 30 seconds left for uh, Mayor Victorino as well as Mayor Caldwell. Go ahead, Mayor Caldwell. I just want to thank uh, everyone for the uh, the people of Oahu for all the, all their hard work to this date. And a real shout out to our first responders and our medical professionals, what they're doing. I mean, they're on the front line of this. All of them together have made a tremendous difference. We've got to still hang together. We've got a long climb yet ahead of us. But we can make it through this by working together. And just want to say mahalo to everybody. And Mayor Victorino, a few seconds left for you. I would echo the same sentiment and saying mahalo to all the my team, all the different uh, emergency responders and others that have made a big difference, all the nonprofits, all the groups that have come out and made Maui safer and have been able Thank to you. feed a lot of uh, needy. Thank you so very much. Thank Aloha. you to all of you. And I know we, uh, no doubt we wrapped up quickly. But before we go, we want to remind you that for information on COVID-19, check out our website at pbshawaii.org. Mahalo to all of you for joining us tonight. And we thank our guests, Mayor Kim, Mayor of Hawaii County, Michael Victorino, Mayor of Maui County, Derek Kawakami, Mayor of Kauai County, and Kirk Caldwell, Mayor of the City and County of Honolulu. Thank you to all of you. All right, next week on Insights, representatives from the Food Bank and Social Service Agencies join us to discuss the great needs created by this pandemic. Please join us then. I'm Laurie Amata for Insights on PBS Hawaii. Uhui ho.